Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much to honorable members, um, including the member for Shrewsdale. The member for Shrewsdale is a very different person today. I, I applaud his demeanor and his behavior today, Mr. Speaker. It shows what bad company cannot do you. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I want to answer just a few questions posed, posed by the member for shows there, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this, this borrowing today is part of an agreement that was negotiated with the Taiwanese government from 2022 to 2026. So it's, uh, it's new. It's not anything that was there before our time. And that was, that's part of an agreement with the Taiwanese government. And I want to thank the Minister for Health for thanking the Taiwanese government for this, for this agreement, Mr. Speaker. So it's, it's, it's a new loan. It's new money. It was not negotiated before by the previous government. The only, from the previous government, there was a $10 million loan, which we came to Parliament to do to get the resolution passed. That was from the previous government. But this loan is purely from the government we negotiated with the Taiwanese. Second, Mr. Speaker, on the statutory interest rate, the member for um, Castries North brought it up. And I was, I've been informed by legal minds that that 6% is set by the courts. So we have to go to the court to ask it to be reduced or to be increased. So it's not something we can do without going to the court. It's normally set by judges. It's, it doesn't depend on the bank rate or the borrowing rates. That's, that's how, how our laws are. So it's, 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 it's called the statutory rate of interest. Well, we have to go back to the court. Yeah. That's something we can, we can explore. See, when you, when you give us good ideas, you explore it, you know. We, that's how we are. That's our nature. That is why we... That is why we, we look into, and you brought it up, we look into the dogs. Because, Mr. Speaker, the reason why there was no need, there was not need for the dogs, as I told you before, is that we had the scanners, they were either on the verge of working or they were working. So there was no need at the time for both the dogs and the scanners. But the, the story of the scanners is a, and you see, Mr. Speaker, when I hear these things about crime, and I want to really applaud the member for Kashi Sov for his contribution, it, it, it almost looks like some talk show hosts are gloating, are rejoicing at the fact that we have an issue of, of crime in St. Lucia. But, Mr. Speaker, that is not good for the country. It's not good for the country. It's not good for the future of the country. And it, will, it appears as if it affects this prime minister and us now. It appears like that. So we gloat. And we, we, we I mean, you almost hear, I mean, I heard a press conference, and I heard my colleague from, from um, Kashi South spoke about when we were in opposition. I can swear we never did that, never. I heard a press conference, and I heard a, a, a kind of, Almost a happiness that things, I mean, you, uh, somebody was asked, what do you do about guns? He said, you build a pot and call this up. If you're talking about guns coming in the country now for, for, for on, on barrels, the answer is, you build a pot in call this up. Uh, you call that a solution now for a pot and call this up. I mean, let's, let's just think about it. And these things sound, it's just like vat on electricity. These things sound, I mean, and people say, oh, that's a good solution. What, what are solutions the government is giving? What, anything you say, they tell you, is not good enough. Anything you say. Anything you say or do is not good enough. But nobody can tell you what to do instead. I'm saying in the public that this government will accept anyone including the leader of the opposition, 
who will come and have a discussion and have a meaningful discussion on crime and the solution to crime. This government will listen to anybody who wants to say that. Anybody. Anybody, Mr. Speaker. But you must remember, when you were in opposition, there was a crime commission. And I attended. I went to the meeting in opposition. I went because I was interested. I didn't sit back and gloat. And I didn't sit down and attack the minister for national security and say he doesn't have a clue. I didn't talk about weak leadership. I went to the... And people seem to forget that. I went to the meeting. They, they appointed me, but they never called me again. So I can't go with... I agreed, but no, no, no one ever called me. Mr. Speaker, and these are the things that people tend to forget. But you know, when we try to make political mileage with these things, they come back and they haunt you. Because a member for Castries have made a point. Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Stephenson King had the issue. Prime Minister Kenny Anthony had the issue. Prime Minister, um, what's his name, Alan Chastney also had the issue. This issue has been in this country for a long time. And when you say not only in St. Lucia, they tell you, don't talk about, talk about other places, don't talk about other places. This, there seems to be a pandemic of crime in the region, even in the world, if you want to extend it a little bit. I mean, there seems to be a pandemic. Since COVID, something seems to be happening as far as crime is concerned. I won't come here and speak about other countries, but something seems to be happening. And what we must do is we have to forget this political mileage that we think we can gain and try our best to confront that problem. When, because somebody just sent me something on a British paper. Somebody sent something on, on, on a British paper, quoting, quoting crime in St. Lucia. And, you know, what we are doing when we promote these things and when, and when our headlines show this murder and that murder, what we do is we give the foreign press fuel. We fuel them, Mr. Speaker. Now, when we give them fuel, it means that our tourism may, will get affected. And when you have former tourism minister, making the point that you hide tourism figures, you hide crime figures, because you don't, because you not want to affect the tourism industry. It is it's painful. And citizens of this country should condemn that kind of behavior, Mr. Speaker. Because, all right, supposing something happens, a miracle happens, and we get out of government tomorrow, and you get in. You think the gunmen we worry about you in office? The gunmen will be gunmen. The gangs will do what they have to do. The, 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 the hits will continue. If, because when these guys are committing the crime, you think they care about who is prime minister? I hope. Not. So we cannot afford, and, and what's happened is, it has never happened before, because remember when we're in opposition, and the member, the member from Viewfort South, when he was Prime Minister, he always said, the few things you can get together on is crime, bananas. Remember him saying that all the time, crime and bananas, let's get together because this is very important. But what's happening now, Mr. Speaker, is not good. This gloating, this thing about blame the Prime Minister, oh, he's the Minister of National Security, what is he doing? My father was a policeman, not me. This thing about gloating and every day as if we are almost happy that this happened and this means and I'm missing national security so you know Mr. Speaker we must stop it because in the final analysis all of us will pay and all and the country will not benefit other countries have states of emergency as we speak states of emergency as we speak because of the crime issue States of emergency, but they are larger countries, and then the tourism will not, will not get affected as it would in St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. So I want us to have a rethink and a restart. The Minister of National Security has got enough blows every day for crime. 
We, we make all kinds of, of, of comparisons. Even you, Mr. Speaker, have gone into the firing line. I mean, it's time. It is time, Mr. Speaker, because whilst we, are, whilst we are trying to score political points, the gunmen are still shooting, and the crime will continue while we try to score political points. Mr. Speaker, have you ever thought about the reasons why certain things happen in St. Lucia? Have you ever thought about it? Is it because of the things we say? Is it because of what we, the, the, the threats that we make? Because, Mr. Speaker, threats are not only threats made by gunmen, you know. Politicians make threats. And when politicians make threats, they should be called up and an excuse should not be made for politicians when they make threats to people, particularly journalists. That, that should be condemned by everyone, Mr. Speaker. But, but you don't make excuses and say it happened before. And remember, remember from, oh, oh that, that, that's happened before. It always happens. Two wrongs cannot make a right. If something was wrong then, it can't be right now. It was wrong then, and it's wrong now, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, whilst we use some of these resources to fight crime, and I've, and I've said that the budget that we're going to be debating for 2324, the emphasis is going to be on national security. That's, that's going to be, and I hope to get the support of honorable members, it's going to be on national security, Mr. Speaker. Because we cannot, regardless of the growth and the work that we're doing in, 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 in the tourism industry, that kind of publicity, that kind of gloating, this kind of headlines, this kind of talk shows every day, and people calling the station with all kinds of solutions that make no sense. And nobody is saying to them, what you say does not make sense because it's an attack on the Minister of National Security. So nobody says, does that make sense? Nobody says so. Just allow it to happen. Just allow, it, allow, allow the person to say it because it's an attack on the Minister of National Security or attack on the government. Just say it. Doesn't make sense. So, Mr. Speaker, I call on every citizen, let us join in this fight. And anybody who has solutions, come forward and let us discuss it. Come forward and let us discuss it. Because what's happening now, particularly the gloating and the publicity, Mr. Speaker, I made a comment on how crime is reported in other countries. And that, that is a fact. I won't go call any country's name, but it's a fact. And it was said that I want to suppress the press. I want to stifle press freedom. Because I made a comment on how we report crime in this country. So many things are happening in the country that are positive, Mr. Speaker. But every headline cannot be about a murder. And I'm not, and I'm not saying that, Mr. Speaker, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not wanting to, to suppress the press or, or stifle press freedom. That's an opinion, Mr. Speaker. The same way that a politician should not threaten a journalist on tape and, and dare the, lead, the Prime Minister to, to disclose the tape, and when the tape is disclosed, an excuse is made for that tape that was disclosed. Listen to, to the sequence. A threat is made to a journalist. I come here and I say a threat is made. I don't identify who, when, how, or what. I just say a threat is made. I am dead. Oh, you always make accusations. You make accusations. So, 
play the play, play it. I said, okay, all right. The play, the tip got played. I'm not even sure who played, but the tip got played. The tip gets played, and instead of the people who were daring me to play it, when the tip gets played, they make, they make excuses and say, that might be the tape, and somebody did that before, etc. Instead of saying, that is wrong in the environment that we are operating in St. Lucia, that is wrong, and you should not do that. You know, Mr. Speaker, that's how it is, and that's how it, it will continue to be, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, this motion, as we've, been, we've said clearly, is to fund the, the budget. And what I want to note to you, Mr. Speaker, is the transparency in which we did that. We did not hide. And again, no, no again, Mr. Speaker, when the, the truth isn't spoken, we cannot make excuses for things that are not true. You saw on a Facebook page that this government had borrowed half a billion dollars sometime in October. We showed proof that wasn't true. None of the people who are repeating that have said that, listen to me, Mr. Leader of the Opposition, you should not say things that are not true. They prefer not to, to play as if it didn't exist, as if he never said so. And he put it on his Facebook page, he said it in public, but no one is saying you must not say that. That cannot be right. That is a bad example, Mr. Speaker. That is, that is a bad example. And you see, and these bad examples manifest themselves in several ways. Because you cannot openly say things that, that are not true on the record. And you do not, you never pull it back. And people accept it because they support you. That can't be right. So let's get, so Mr. Speaker, what did we say about this budget? On page 63 of, of the budget, we made it clear how we are going to finance the budget. And I want you to read, it, Mr. Speaker, at the end of page 62. We said, in addition to the 1.327 billion in revenue and grants, the net financing needs of the budget amount to $505 million, 124,000. Clearly, we never hid it. We never said we, it's on the record. And we further said how we are going to be raising that money, Mr. Speaker. It's clear. So why, why do you have to come and... and Mr. Speaker, you, you, you don't want me to say lies, I wouldn't lie. I wouldn't say lie. You don't want me, you, why, have, why are you to come and deliberately, deliberately mislead people on something that was clear? But Mr. Speaker, Total revenue projected in the budget, 1.327.68 million. Total expenditure, less refunds, 1.832.80 million. Financing gap, 505.12 million. How are we going to raise that financing gap? It said $79 million worth of short-term borrowing because we've changed, we've tried to change from long-term to short-term and the rest in long-term borrowing, which we are doing here this afternoon. From short-term to long-term, which we are doing here this afternoon, Mr. Speaker. Very transparent and very clear. Very transparent and very clear. But, Mr. Speaker, there are certain headwinds that we do not anticipate. We do not anticipate this spike in the cost of goods and services and in the cost of the changes in the supply chain that will cause freight to be so expensive, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, yesterday, the member, the Minister of Commerce, announced there, was in, there will be an increase in the price of bread, Mr. Speaker. 
and the government has been subsidizing and will continue to subsidize even if that increase even with that increase the government continues to subsidize the price of flour for the simple reason we do not produce flour and that is why we are speaking about alternative means of eating and again when i made the point of eating our bananas i was ridiculed they paid children to say the prime minister wants us to eat banana oil that was sad it was very sad Mr. Speaker, because right now i'm going to make another point and you all can ridicule me if you want we must start to think about cassava flour you see but that short-sightedness and that failure to understand that you've lost government that's what causes things to happen because with the with the increase the escalation in the price of flour let us think about cassava flour and banana flour this is what we have to look into this is called import substitution but if you continue if you continue instead of educating people if you continue to try to make political mileage because you believe that this is a soft on the belly of the government you will not survive because if you get the government the price will still be the same it will still be the same and i heard the leader of the opposition says we didn't take his advice on how to <laughs> on how we didn't take his advice on how to improve the supply chain oh wait, what do you have <laughs> It's a sensitive topic. You understand? That's what he said, you know. That's what he said. We didn't take his advice. So, Mr. Speaker, so these are the challenges that we have. These are the challenges that we have, Mr. Speaker. And the challenge that I must say, all countries have. It is not unique to this country. When the, what the member for Kasri South said, it's true. If in this government told us, transparency, that we had $3 billion worth of investment come to this country, $3 billion, no one has questioned why should a man with his of sound mind and intellect tell the world that we have $3 billion worth of investment and in his term of office, pre-COVID, post-COVID, pre-minister, during minister, he hasn't built one hotel. Every budget, we heard seven hotels. Before COVID, and don't lose COVID as an excuse, you know, before COVID, seven hotels. Now, after COVID, no hotel. <laughs> but I mean, so, but, but you know, but we allow that to pass because we are like, because we don't like the prime minister. And you write nonsense about, oh, uh, black, what do you say about marsh and things? Mr. Speaker, why are we afraid of our past and afraid of our patrimony and afraid of our heritage? Why do you believe that we must say we are products of countries that we do not belong to. Mr. Speaker, so you write a whole article on, on, on the paper because you believe that I stand up for what I believe in. I have no, I don't want to hide anything. I am I'm, I'm proud of where I come from. And all of us will say, I'm proud of where we come from. Why must we hide it? Why must you have false accents? We have to be proud of, of, of our past. I was born and bred in One Works Road. Why do you want me to hide it for? And when I said you vexed me because I said, but I am happy for my achievements. And I'm happy that these men and women and the people of Kashi Sif has elected me as a prime minister and I'm proud of it. So why do you think that I mustn't say it? But you attack me, a whole two articles on blah, 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 blah. I mean, speaker.
Let me just be gone. We Mr. Speaker, we have to get a little more serious in our criticisms and a little more serious in how we handle the affairs of this country, Mr. Speaker. A little more serious, Mr. Speaker. Because what we are doing will not help anyone. And of course, we, we were in opposition. But look at the things that we criticize in opposition. We criticize borrowing $32 million for Lockerbie. Up to today, the only product of Lockerbie is two playing fields, two artificial, artificial turf, what do you call it? Artificial turfs on Sufre and the, and the fellow in Sufre, and they are very not because they can't play cricket any, anymore because you convert their field, you convert their field where you could play cricket, track football, you convert it into a no cricket field. Sufre has some of the best cricketers in Sufre. And two, you put one in Denry, in Denry North, and one in, in Miku. In the, yes, and one in Miku. That is, that's what we, 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 we speak about, you know. We spoke about that borrowing. $32 million, $32 million from Lockerbie. $32 million, and the only visible, and I want someone to tell me that is not true. The only visible sign of the $42 million from Lockerbie is the, the Sufre, Denry North, and the, and the Rizzo. That's the only visible signs. Where else are the, where else? So if you criticize that, if you criticize that, you must criticize that borrowing. You must criticize that borrowing, but compare it to the borrowing that we want to do in this, in this, in this bill or in this, in this budget, compared to, 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 to the borrowing, Mr. Speaker. What, what do you do, borrowing? You borrow certain million dollars to bring some people in, in, in a thing called Pullman Dew. Yeah, the civil service is replete with technocrats, technicians. Sometimes I'm, I'm amazed at the qualifications that exist in the institution civil service. I'm amazed. Masters, PhDs, two masters, Eh? bachelor's de degrees, all kind of qualifications. But you need to take, you need to borrow $13 million to bring people from abroad to come and tell you what to do with your systems. That's what we criticize. And what happened? Nothing works. First of all, these people don't understand the solution culture. They don't understand it. Nothing works. That's what we criticize. That's what we criticize. That's the borrowing that we criticize. We criticize the borrowing to build a road. And Mr. Speaker, you know, I was challenged again to talk about St. Jude and the airport. Now, you know, let me tell you about me. You know, I have the most in the world patience. Like Job. And when a former colleague of mine who's lost his way, used to say, he said, ek patience okati we boyo for me, bet rouge. But now the prophet has lost his way. <laughs> as, as a member of myself, as a member, as, as a member for Vakashi Sab, will tell you, the, cook, the poor gentleman, a guy that was so dynamic and so vibrant, the prophet has lost his way. I feel so sorry for him. Anyhow. <laughs> Talk for yourself. <laughs> so, yes, with patience, with patience. So you know all the challenge I'm challenged. Oh, the 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 the, the tip, the tip I was challenged. The tip came out. You see all the challenge I've been challenged about here, Nora Airport, and Chengdu Hospital. You see all these challenges. I'm saying nothing. I am saying nothing. All these challenges about St. Jude, he won't know, I'm saying nothing. 
I'm saying nothing. So here's what we, we criticize the borrowing for. We criticize the borrowing for bo borrowing $15 million to build a road for, and in, uh, for a, a, horse race, a horse racing track. And we criticize the fact that you borrow further to change a whole airport, an entire airport. You've changed it. You've changed the whole structure just to facilitate a horse racing track. And if you think that's not true, just wait to hear. Patience, yes. Because it's not me saying it, you know. And you can ask these, my colleagues here, on these two issues, and some of them complain that I have, I have too much patience. On these two issues, I was urged, I said, no, colleagues, let us get independent people to look at it first. And I know some of them quietly say, I'm too patient. Or some of them say that I must be a little more aggressive and, and, and does seem to be always on the side of being cool. Yeah. You want me to be more aggressive? <laughs> you understand? So what we did, we looked for two independent, in, independent, not investigations, you know, two to look at these two products independently. And you'd be surprised to know that the conclusions from both local and foreign experts are the same. Yes. You'd be surprised to know that, Mrs. Yes. You'd be surprised to know that. Because some of the borrowing that you did for St. Jude, that is the borrowing that we're criticizing. Why in the good name that you must take a building and the debate for St. Jude will start. But since we talk about borrowing, we have to borrow some money for St. Jude and bring it up now. <clears throat> that debate, I promise that you're going to have a full debate on St. Jude. And the member for, for Cassius will not let me forget that. We'll have a full debate on St. Jude. Do, do you know, <clears throat> last week we went to the police. We went to Viewfort to sign for the upgrade of the police station in Viewfort. And, and again, I'm criticized for that. Right. So we went to St. Jude. A colleague of ours is there. He's not normally an emotional guy. He got a headache. He was actually, I, I saw a guy visibly shaken. He says to me, why? did these guys allow these buildings to waste and build that monstrosity? I mean, the, the, the gentleman, I won't mention his name, because that's not my style of country name in the parliament. He was visibly shaken. Because I want to invite you, member for shows here, let us go and take a walk on St. Jude now. I'll drive you. And you will see the difference in St. Jude now, only with cleanup, only clean, we've just cleaned it up. You said difference in St. Jude now and the difference in the thing you all have there, the box. But you know, they challenged me again. When I'm going to reveal what that box is about, I hope, we make, I, hope I get no one complains and no one makes excuses. Because even you, it will hurt your heart. Because I'm, I'm sure you don't have all the facts. You know, saying until proven guilty. <laughs> I'm sure you don't have all the facts. Because when you will understand that you spent up to today, I have to pay a bill. I have to pay a bill on this St. Jude thing. Up to today, you, you understand that security at St. Jude, the bill that I have to pay up to May 2023, it's about $600,000 just for the period June 20, June to May for security. There must be security. Yes. And you wouldn't know the, the past bills. I mean, when that debate on St. Jude will come, I hope all the talk show hosts listen and speak about what we say because there's there's, there's, we seem to forget certain things. 
This St. Jude thing, and, and you have to borrow to fund it. This St. Jude thing will call, will make, will make the most, the most um, stern person and the strongest supporter. By the way, I want to tell you something. I have a letter from the United Workers Party to visit St. Jude. Eh? I don't know if you know that. Yes, to visit them. There's a request, and again, they, they might challenge me again. They want, I have a letter to visit St. Jude from the United Workers Party. Yes, I don't know if you know that. But probably the letter wasn't, the letter is not locked in the office. I have it. I will let them come and visit it. I let them go. Huh? When I applied, <laughs> when I applied to visit, when we applied to visit the hospital, they, 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 you know, they took me all over the place, all over the place, said all kinds of things. But I have a letter from the United Workers Party to visit St. Jude. I'm going to allow them to do it. Let's go with yeah. them. Yeah, I'll go with them. Yeah, yeah. We go to Yeah, yeah. Because. When, when they have completed that visit, I am sure they'll have a change of mind. You understand? Because I want you, my friend, to visit St. Jude now. Just go in there now. And you'll see, you'll see the difference and how the people in the stadium could have been there a long, 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 long time ago, and not at the cost. We've spent a hundred million dollars on this monstrosity, and you don't know about it yet. You know nothing about it yet. I'm sure you do not know. So all those who challenge me, all those who say, I was making this and that, I, the time will come, and he will, he will allow me to forget it, to debate the St. Jude Hospital. You will be surprised when you hear what you have to hear. You'll be surprised. I was surprised myself, much as you. You'll be shocked. Because when you see the story of St. Jude will come out. Next, next speech. <laughs> day one, yes. I'm glad you talk about day one. Day one. Day one. Because you know, do you know that there was a handover report that you refused to disclose that there was one sitting down here. He was there. Not you, in your seat. When we spoke about the handover report, he got up and he When the handover report went in the public, he backtracked and he said, Nobody never showed me that. The handover report that detailed how conditions were at St. Jude. Detailed, not by politicians, by technocrats. We made excuses for that. We took SSU, we invade people's houses. You know what now? They might write me for his money. We have to pay the goods and services that you all seize from the guy with the SSU. I asked the commissioner of police for a report on that, on that invasion or that search. I haven't got it. I'm going to write the new commissioner of police to, to ask her for a report on the invasion because the guy is asking me for his money. The guy is saying that he had goods and services that you all took away and he wants his money. I have to. That's not a threat. The guy is saying he wants his money. You, do you know, Mr. Member for Shozel? that on the St. Jude site, there is a complete theater in a, in, in a container. And you know, so Mr. Speaker, I'll talk, that's to talk for another show, because I, I sometimes I get very, very emotional when I speak about St. Jude, because it really hurts me, it really hurts me, Mr. Speaker, because I've seen, I'm, I'm seeing, Nearly 300 million dollars 
300 million dollars and the people still are in still the poor condition in the stadium 300 million dollars later and you're talking about the prime minister say from Masha that's the main topic you want to talk about 300 million dollars and the people are still in a stadium and you have a monstrosity that cannot be used it cannot be used and i don't think and my colleagues here they don't even know what's happening in that monstrosity i haven't told them i have not told them they do not know the state of that monstrosity they don't know you know because I've kept it to myself for now. So when that debate on St. Jude will come, you'll understand why. We have to borrow. We have to borrow to fund because of what the economist calls the opportunity cost. Because of the money that they wasted on St. Jude and on Pullman Jew, they had used it differently. We will not have to have borrow so much today. And that is a difference. But, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank members for supporting this resolution. As I said, it was open and transparent, and this government will continue. And even though when we make a mistake, we will come and admit that we made a mistake. Because to err is human. If we do something and they pull us up for doing it, we'll say, yes, I made a mistake. We'll give the excuse. We'll give an excuse why we did it, but the intention is always honorable. But we will not lie and lie again and unlie the first lie and lie again on the first lie. You understand? And make another lie to lie to cover up the first lie. And say we never said anything what we see. And look for our backers to defend and, and practice political umbrage. You know what political umbrage is? Political umbrage is when you completely deflect the situation. That is called in the jargon political umbrage. Am I right? Am I right? Yeah. It's called pol political umbrage. This, this, this was just going to school. I got a long time ago. I forget. <coughs> it's called political umbrage. When you know something is, is in one path, but you completely deflect it. So instead of talking about what the Prime Minister is the Minister of Financing, you talk about he say he can have a marshal. You know, you have a whole article about that. Just because to deflect from the point of what I have to manage, what I'm managing, and how with the help of these men and women, I must say we are doing a good job in the circumstances. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I thank members for supporting the And I want to tell the, pu the public resolution, the budget, the budget for 23-24 is very soon, a few months from now. We are going to be, we are going to be able to give a report on the performance of the government from the last budget and the promises he made in the manifesto. We're going to be able to give a report to tick off what we've done and what we've not done and give reasons why we haven't done it and look for the future of this country. I must say, Mr. Speaker, in spite of the, the, in spite of the downside risk, the future is good. We've had a good report of revenue for the month of November. Um, very good report for revenue. It probably is the highest revenue we received for the year in the month of November. I want to thank the technocrats in the Ministry of Finance, Mr. Speaker, because when we came to government, we never interfered with them. We treated them as professionals, let them do their work as professionals. We respect them as professionals. Same thing with the police force. We respect the police as professionals. We expect them to behave professionally, and we will give the guidance, but they must understand that they must follow the guidance of the political direction. That's all we ask for. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.